Hey y'all, welcome back to another hunting ammo ballistics gel test. Today we've got another versus video. We're going to be putting two Hornady American whitetail loads head to head. We've got the 150 grain and 165 grain, both in 308 Winchester. And here are the boxes for that Hornady American whitetail 150 and 165 grain interlock loads for the 308 Winchester. Flip it around to the back. I'm just going to show you the back of one box because it's the same information. Here is your promo info. Feel free to stop, pause, and read all that if you would like to. But what I will show you is the different velocities for both bullet weights. So here is the 150. It looks like they're claiming 2,820 feet per second. And then for the 165, it looks like they're claiming 2,700 feet per second. It'll be interesting to see how close we get to those velocities from the 22 inch barrel of my Ruger American. Let's go ahead and pop one open and take a look at the ammo itself. And I have checked, they are identical to the eye as far as I can tell. So I'm not gonna bother showing you the other weight, but here is what they look like. Nice, clean brass, good looking stuff. Just a simple soft point hunting load. Let's go shoot them and see how they do. And my test rifle today is my Ruger American Standard, chambered in 308 Winchester, of course. It has a 22-inch barrel. I did have it threaded so I could use a Silencer Co. Hybrid 46 suppressor. And coming on back, I've got it topped off with a Vortex Diamondback 4 to 16 by 42 scope. Definitely helps see the gel blocks down there. And of course, I've got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs on the buttstock. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would love to make you one. And I've also got one of my super thick Latigo leather slings on there. Those are also available on my website. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you my whitetail deer design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And here are the velocities for that Hornady American Whitetail 150 grain load in 308. A minimum of 2759, a max of 2782 for an average of 2773. And here are the velocities for the 165 grain version. We had a min of 2614, a max of 2630 for an average of 2621. And we'll get more in depth with the velocity here in a second. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting both the 150 grain American Whitetail 308 load. That that's in those blocks and the 165s which are in these blocks right here. First we're going to take a look at the 150s. Very similar performance between the two and it looks like we captured all three bullets. I came around to the other side so we could see a little bit better. We got one, two, three. Penetration wise it looks like our shallowest is about, we'll give it 20 inches. The next is about 20, eh, we'll give it 21 inches. It's a little bit more than that. And the third one we'll give 22 inches. It's right there. And it looks like they expanded and mushroomed very nicely. And coming on over to the first block, wound cavity wise, looks like they open up at about the one and a half inch mark, make a pretty nice blow up, maximizes or peaks at about the four and a half inch mark, starts to taper off, and then by about eh, 11 to 12 inches, it's pretty much done, and then they just keep penetrating. Looks like good stuff. And then for the 165s, penetration wise, we got 18, or no, 19 inches. We'll give that one 20 and a half inches, and then this one is right about, we'll give it 24 inches. Little bit of a spread, but honestly, just at first glance, it's hard to tell through the glare of the block here. It looks like these 165s expanded a bit more than the 150s. And I could be wrong, and we'll find out when I dig these out and we take a look at them, but for now let's go look at the first block and I've got some bubbles here from where I remelted the block that's just what happened whenever it dried on top it looks like they expand starting at about the two inch mark they come out open up and then taper off at about the 10 to 11 to 12 inch mark pretty much the same thing as the 150s so let's go ahead and dig them out and take a look all right y'all so we've got the bullets pulled out of the gel and here on the table let's go ahead and look at them and take a look at the metrics weight retention wise we'll hit the 150s first we saw 138 139 
109 and 139 grains retained weight for an average of about 139 grains which works out to 92% weight retention. Now, being that these aren't a bonded bullet, they're just a you know, copper and lead bullet. Now, they are interlocks. They're, they have the interlock ring. I'm actually surprised the weight retention was so high. That's excellent performance. And then for the 165s, we saw 149, 152, and 155 grains for an average of 152 grains retained weight, once again, exactly 92% weight retention. The same identical performance. Now on to expansion. For the 150s, we saw 0 0.65, 0 0.66, and 0.68 inches for an average of 0.66 inches expanded diameter, and that works out to 2.2x expansion. For the 165 grainers, we saw 0 0.66, 0 0.7, and 0.73 inches for an average of 0 0.70 inches expanded diameter which is a little bit more, it works out to 2.3x expansion, so very similar. And both of those are over the 2x mark I like to see for your white-tailed deer, sort of standard medium game hunting bullets. These did really well. Velocity-wise, for the 150s, we saw 2,783 feet per second for the high, 2,759 for the low, for an average of 2773 versus the factory build velocity of 2820. So he did come in a little bit slow, 47 feet per second slow on average. I've seen a lot worse than that. And then for the 165s, our high velocity was 2630, our low was 2615 for an average of 2621 versus the factory build of 2700 feet per second. So again, a bit slow. 79 feet per second slow on average to be precise. Again, I've seen a lot worse than that. Velocity is the last thing that I'm worried about. And before someone in the comments says, oh, well, you maybe you've got a slow barrel. No, I don't. I've tested several loads that actually performed above factory spec. It's just the variance in ammo. This is very common. Ammo almost never hits its factory rated spec because the factories are using unrealistic barrels. The vast majority of hunting rifles in 308 Winchester have 22 inch or shorter barrels, which is what I was using, a 22 inch barreled Ruger American, but the factories are using 24 inch, 26 inch, very tight spec barrels to ring out every foot per second they can. So the number on the box is typically completely unrealistic. And that's why I'm giving you the velocities. And now we're gonna talk about impact velocity. So how fast are these bullets going down there at 100 yards when they hit the ballistics gel? Now this is an estimate based on a mathematical formula, but I am using factory provided data to come up with this. So this is an estimate, but it's gonna be very, very close. For the 150 grain bullet, our impact velocity at 100 yards is about 2,579 feet per second. And for the 165 grainers, we're looking at about 2,438 feet per second. Just something else to know. And then penetration wise for the 150s we saw 20 inches, 21 inches, and 22 inches for an average of 21 inches of penetration. For the 165s we saw very similar 19 inches, 20 and a half inches, and 24 inches for an average of once again 21 inches of penetration. So on average, no difference between the two different bullet weights. The 165s had a little bit more of a spread, but all in all, both of them are right there in that range that I like to see for your standard medium game hunting, white-tailed deer, stuff like that of 20 inches or more. These are right there. And then on to kinetic energy, with the 150 grain bullet going on average 2,773 feet per second, we're looking at 2,561 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. And for the 165 grain bullets going on average 2,621 feet per second, we're looking at actually a little bit less energy, 2,516 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. All right, y'all, so it's time for my final thoughts on that Hornady American Whitetail 150 and 165 grain interlock loads out of the 308 Winchester. I think these things performed extremely well for what they're meant for, which is whitetail deer hunting. It's right there on the box. It's in the name of the ammo. Whitetail deer, standard medium game. These things hit all the metrics that would make them excellent choices for whitetail deer hunting. The weight retention was actually really high for a cup and core bullet, 92% for both. Expansion was also pretty darn good, 2.2x and 2.3x respectively good expansion, 
Velocity is not the biggest deal in the world. These weren't super slow compared to box spec. I'm pretty happy with where the velocity landed. And then penetration was right there in the range I like to see for whitetail deer. About 20 inches or a little bit more. These were right there, 21 inches on average. I think this stuff performed excellent for what it is meant for. And so between the two, which one would I pick? Well, more so than maybe any other load that I've tested multiple weights of in the same video, I've done a couple of them. These performed almost identically, almost exactly the same. So I would just use whichever weight shoots the best out of my rifle. If I'm getting tighter groups with the 150s, I would use those. If I'm getting tighter groups with the 165s, I would use those. There's no other major difference that would sway my choice one way or the other. You're not getting a bunch more penetration out of the 165s. You're not getting a bunch more expansion out of the 150s stuff like that, they're so similar that it would just come down to which one my rifle shot more accurately. And so at the end of the day, I would be totally happy going in the woods with this stuff, hunting white-tailed deer, mule deer, wild pigs, stuff like that. It's definitely gonna do the job for you. So let me and everybody else know what you think about this ammo down in the comments. Which one would you pick and why? Or would you use this stuff at all? Would you use something else? Let us know. And check out my website, masonweather.com and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also tons of photos showing all the customizable options including name, initial, and caliber stamping as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.